Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Fallout 4 Survival. As you can see, we're back in Diamond City and that dialogue has been playing again. It's because um, I didn't get an exit safe last time for some reason, so I had to go back to Diamond City, go through the entire dialogue at the entryway again and then go into the city. I did get the same Persuade checks, so that was lucky. So I know I need to get to Valentine's Detective Agency first. And that's exactly where we're gonna go next. But first, we can actually talk to Piper herself because she can also give us a bit more experience, even though we already know we need to go to Valentine's Detective Agency. So let's do that first once she gets in. So we discover the Diamond City Market, which is lovely. So again, Diamond City is a repurposed baseball stadium. And uh, there's a few uh, shops here that actually are in the same brand, so like for example Swatters over there just sells baseball equipment, but uh, they don't really know how baseball works if you talk to them. You then! You need a genuine, authentic, custom-made hickory swatter. Okay, what's a swatter? What's a swatter? Haha, <laughs> rookie, eh? A swatter, my friend, is a Diamond City tradition. See, it used to be that this whole place was a stadium. And two teams would meet and play a game called baseball. One team would beat the other team to death with these things called baseball bats. And and the best bats were called swatters. True fact. Um, that's not baseball, of course. And it's weird that they know what baseball, well, the term baseball and that this was a stadium, but not what the game exactly entailed. I mean, ball is in the name of it and you don't even need a ball except for the balls that you might be bursting with the baseball bats, but that's not baseball. Hey, dumbass, that's not how baseball was played. That <laughs> right, little Miss Smarty Pants? Well, if you're such an expert, how do you think it was played? And this is actually where we can go even wilder, so we can say I either the actual rules or say it was even more violent. And I do love the reaction to of the guy when you say it was more violent. The teams would also beat the spectators to death. Yeah. That's how the term spectator sport got started. I like my version better. Now, <laughs> can I interest you in these genuine, authentic, custom-made hickory swatters? Uh, no. Not Good interested. Pass. You're missing out, sister. Because we don't really roll uh, a melee character. On uh, the gunless playthrough, this was different, of course. But let's head into public occurrences. So, she calls us blue. We can immediately ask her why she does that. We're, oh. Hi, hi, Piper. Did you grab you in the night? Let's, uh, we warned you. let's have a little chat. Why are you calling me that? Because you're a vault dweller. <laughs> I know you're not wearing the blue jumpsuit right now, but the pit boy and the fish out of water look. Dead giveaways. So here's the deal. I want an interview. Your life story in print. I think it's time Diamond City had a little outside perspective on the Commonwealth. You do that, and uh, I'll tell you what. I'll come with you. Watch your back while you get used to the world above ground. So this is a bit different from where if you wouldn't know to go to Valentine's Detective Agency, because otherwise she would use this interview as a bargaining chip to actually give you the information about the detective agency. But let's give her the sarcastic options. Here's your headline. Local woman says no. Gonna be like that, huh? <sighs> Smart ass. Fine. We'll do this later, but I want that interview, got me? I mean, I do love a sarcastic option, but of course we're going to hey, do Piper. the interview. It's more free experience. Yes. So, I know you're from a vault. How would you describe your time on the inside? Let's do all the sarcastic options. It was just me and a thousand guinea pigs. They turned carnivorous. Okay, I guess we're going to have to go with the satirical approach to this article. So, you've seen the Commonwealth. Diamond City, how does it compare to your old life? I've been having too much fun blowing things up to think about it. Gotta make my job hard for me, huh? All right, if that's the quote, that's the quote. Now, I already know you're looking for your son, Sean. Do you suspect the Institute was involved in his kidnapping? Um, they might actually be, because they looked pretty fancy. Sure sounds like they might be. Not even a baby is safe from them. And people wonder why I can't just look the other way. For the last part of our interview, I'd like to do something different. I want you to make a statement to Diamond City directly. 
The threat of kidnapping is all but ignored in the Commonwealth. Everyone wants to pretend it just doesn't happen. What would you say to someone out there who's lost a loved one but might be too scared or too numb to the world to look for them? So the sarcastic options kind of make this an article that will be all over the place tone-wise, but uh, let's take it one day at a time. Anyway, I agreed to come with you, right? Watch your back. Just say the word when you're ready. I can't wait to see where the story goes next. Well, since we're using uh, Lone Wanderer, you won't be in this story, Piper. I'm so sorry about that, but thanks for the experience, though. Uh, let's head to, well, to exploring the rest of the city. So, we go outside and we can hear Riley no screaming fools. for his life. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? I swear, I'm not a synth. Don't shoot, for God's sakes, we're family! And... Put the gun down, now! He's a synth! He'll kill us all! And Kyle, they kill no! Kyle. Okay, show's over. There are no synths in Diamond City, hear me? Just you folks and your damn paranoia. So if we check Kyle, he uh, seems to just... Step away, okay, sorry. Um, I just took a few items from his corpse, but we can see that he's not in fact a synth. And I think, if I recall correctly, that Riley is in fact a synth. If you kill him, there's a synth uh, component on his corpse. So, uh, yeah, Kyle here was definitely right about that. Because there's actually a lot of quests that can start in Diamond City. And since we don't have fast travel, we need to grab every quest we can actually get while we're here. So everybody who's just marked resident won't have anything for us. But I think we can actually give this guy, Sheffield, a Nuka Cola. Hey, Thirsty Nuka Cola. And of course, we're gonna give him a new. Don't I have Nuka? I might have actually given all my Nuka Colas away. Well, not away, in my box. So there we go. We pick up the quest to follow the freedom trail from those two guys talking about the railroad, an organization that seems to be fighting back against the Institute. So that's one quest added to the list. And then we get the dugout in. So let's go in here. This is basically the, the cafe. So then I am crossing river. Wearing nothing but a smile, when out comes the most dangerous of all sea monsters, a mire lurk. A mire lurk? Come on. That's like two out of ten points of danger tops. Now, if you want to talk something really deadly. Vadim! Oh, I forgot you were there, Yefim. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. So there we go. We have the two brothers. Vadim and Yefim? Oh, a customer. Need a room? Um, maybe, but let's talk about your dugout in. What's the story with this place? Not much to say. We sell food, drink, and rooms. Mainly for traders that come to the area. My brother Vadim runs the bar. Scarlet's our waitress, and she helps me keep the rooms clean. As much as they can be. So there we go. We can rent a room. I'm actually gonna do that because we can sleep there then. So we can use that to sleep, but first let's talk. I don't think there's any risk of us dying just yet. So let's talk to his brother. I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <coughs> he is dead though. <laughs> now let me know when you're ready to order. I do love Vadim. So this is your bar. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers had a place to safely pass out after drinking it. <laughs> ah, the joke. So uh, aside from that, we don't really get a quest from him, which is interesting. Because, uh, you know, ah, come on. he was talking a big game there. But there might be more to this place than meets the eye. Let's talk to a few more people. So then we have this ghoul. Look at that. This you is the guy I wanted to talk about. We need to have a talk to. There we go. Hello, Edwards. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I'm always looking for people who know how to handle themselves in dangerous situations. From what I hear, you may fit the bill. Indeed we do. Is there a reward assigned to this quest? I don't mind danger. So long as I get paid well enough. You will be well paid. There we go. I can promise you that. By the way, I'm Edward Deegan. You'll mostly be working for me. But you'll need to talk to my boss first. 
His name is Jack Cabot. He likes to personally interview everyone I hire. He's careful like that. Come down to Cabot House in Beacon Hill and ask to talk to Jack. I'll let him know you're coming. So there we go. Edward Deegan and we start the quest Special Delivery. Talk to Jack Cabot. This is one of the longer quests in the game and it's definitely one I wanted to pick up because Edward is not guaranteed to spawn in Diamond City. He, I think he switches around various bars around the map including Good Neighbor and I think even... Yeah, I don't know what this third location is but uh, probably the Beacon Hill or, or what's it called? Um... But, that's that quest, now let's talk to Hawthorne. Hey. Hey, what's your story? Mercenary, caravan guard? Uh, mercenary, basically. Blood, bullets, and money. All the way. Right. Well, maybe not so much the blood part if you can help it, but I hear you. Anyway, I'm just kicking back and sharing stories while I'm between things. I've been all over, seen vaults, pre-war ruins, and plenty of monsters. You've been to a vault? Yeah. Ever heard of Vault 81? They're standoffish, but every once in a while, they'll let new people in. So there we go. We can update our map through Hawthorne, which is really interesting on survival. Let's hear your best monster story. I'm from Diamond City. You want to talk something really scary? It's the Institute and their synths. Don't go to University Point. Trust me. You don't want to know what they're capable of. There we go. Map updated with that as well. And then the pre-war ruins. So you explore old ruins? Last place I was going to check out was Salem. Real old town far to the north. Never made it though. Got a bad feeling about that area. And Salem is going to be interesting as well, but let's leave with that. See you around, Hawthorne. Later. So there we go. That's just updating our map with a few points of interest. And then there's uh, two more people I need to talk to. I think the first one is going to be Scarlet. Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. I'm not exactly sure if she can give us a quest Who already. Owns this bar anyway? The Bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago. Uh, Vadim Bobrov is the loud one, Yefim Bobrov is the quiet one, and I'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day. Okay, so no quest just yet, so I'm not interested just yet. You know if you change your mind. So we can sleep here, and I think the last character I wanted to talk to is not yet here, so he's probably in his own location. So let's just sleep so door number two is ours we can just head in and take a nap and i got an illness which is ridiculous because this bed is supposed to be what the hell this bed is supposed to be clean i am well rested now but for some reason i mean is survival broken that's not right i mean this is a clean bed it's definitely indoors that is so weird. Let's just get rid of all of that. So there we go. I'm still thirsty, but I'm going to leave it at that because thirsty is minus two intelligence. And we can use that for idiot savant. Uh, also minus one perception, but I don't really need perception just yet for anything. So Have a nice day. did anything change over here after our night of sleep? I don't think so. We have a few extra residents, but... And Edward is still here, which is nice. Um, let's just head outside then. Okay, I know one place where we need to go to pick up another quest. And there's also one tiny quest that we can do outside here. But first things first, I think. So we also got the marker for the combat zone. And I think over here is supposed to be... Yeah. There's this little kid over and here. What have I told you about keeping the lake clean? Don't make me shut down this little stand of yours. Every drop of water that comes out of that filter is 100% pure. Why is a legitimate businessman like myself always got to be hassled by city regulation, huh? It's a health hazard, Chang. It's a profit hazard is what I say. I manage the water, and I'll do it without your interference. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have uh, Shang Kowalski. Let's talk to him. You can't talk now. Some other time. You can't talk now. He's going in, isn't he? He's probably... It's time for bed. And his house is locked. That's interesting. Um, so, yeah. There's all the food and some uh, Nuka-Cola's on the stand. And more where that came from. But for now he doesn't really want to talk to me. Okay, I'll check back later. We first need to go into this radio shack. So this is the Diamond City Radio. So DCR. Look at that. That's a nice logo, isn't it? Let's talk to the man responsible. Oh, um... Hi. 
there. Hello, Travis. Travis. This radio station, um, well, uh, <laughs> well, uh, you'll notice there aren't any other ones. So, huh. So Travis is a talkative guy. Hey, Travis. Don't, uh, don't, don't break my stuff if you, uh, if you don't, if you don't mind. And I just wanted to go in to make this little introduction about him, because he's gonna become important later on. So now that we've talked to Travis, I don't think we can steal his ammo, sadly. I mean, we could, he won't really fight back, because he's a bit of a coward, and that's gonna come in later. But, with all of that done, let's head over here into Valentine Detective Agency. Valentine's Detective Agency, there we go. And of course, when we come in, Valentine is nowhere to be seen. The detective himself is nowhere to be seen. So let's talk to the only person here, which is Ellie Perkins. Is something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. She looks really down on her luck, so uh, let's try a little charm. I know you must be busy, but I won't take much of your time, miss. It's important. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude, but it's just... the detective... he's gone missing. Okay, let's offer our help. Don't worry, I can help. Tell me what happened. <sighs> Nick was working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there that they use as a base. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but... He just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. So there we go. We can ask for money, but I think in this case we don't really need to. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat getup. Please, hurry. I love how she says that he's easy to spot, so we complete the Jewel of the Commonwealth quest with that, and we start immediately we start the new one, which is... Start, there we go, Unlikely Valentine. I do love how that pops up and that all has their own little 2D animation. Cigarettes is still smoking, which is a nice touch as well. We can get the uh, Robco fun over here with the Zeta Invaders holotape game. Let's just take that, that doesn't weigh anything, so that's fine. But she mentions that he's, he's uh, easy to spot because of his trench coat and stuff like that. But uh, there's another reason why he's easy to spot and we'll see that... Uh, Probably later in this episode. Wow, there's four fusion cores in this ammo box. Um, I mean, I could use those. I'm actually gonna take, how many, how much weight do I still have? Uh, so that's four per, so I can take all of them if I want to. There we go. Sorry I took your fusion cores, but I can really use those. So unlikely Valentine is the next step in uh, the main quest. Uh, if you know the game, you obviously knew that already. But there's a few more things I want to check out. Is the little kid out or not? Is Shang out? Doesn't seem to be out, so we can't really do his quest either. There's another area here, another house here. I think it's called the Science Center. Yeah, I think, I think this is the Science Center. So let's go in. Hi there. Are you here for today's free biology lesson? Uh, sure. A biology lesson? That's right. Usually the kids from the schoolhouse are the first to drop by, but I don't see why I can't start the lesson with you. Now, we all talk about radiation like it's a single thing, but it's actually a term referring to dozens of different ionizing rays. You have X-rays, beta rays, gamma rays, but which one are we most worried about? The one most associated with the big old bombs 200 years ago. Um... Gamma rays, of course. Gamma rays? That's right. Now, gamma rays are bad. Really bad. If your body absorbs too much of that kind of radiation, you'll suffer from fatigue, anemia, even death. But some life forms have been living with gamma radiation exposure for two centuries now, and they've adapted. Neat, huh? Uh, sarcastic? You are one huge nerd. I, for one, take that as the highest compliment. Science teaches us the lessons we need to survive, now more than ever. Now it's time for the field trip portion of today's lesson. Are you ready? Uh, sure. Sign me up. You're gonna go out and find a bloatfly gland. You see, the oversized bloatfly of today evolved from an earlier species of a smaller fly. 
Radioactive adaptation has resulted in a unique gland that enables it to balance and maintain speed despite its size. Um, I can ask for money for a field trip because uh, this is this is a bit weird, right? Because she said that this lesson was for kids, and now she's sending me out to kill a murderous bloat fly, which is weird. Um, so I'm gonna ask for money. I do a job. I get paid. This isn't about money. This is about science. You gotta do it for the love of exploration. Okay, okay, okay. So that failed. Get the bloat fly gland. Got it. Remember, bring the gland back in one piece. Oh, and don't chew on it. One of the students got horribly sick because of that mistake. And how many of them died because, you know, there's... You, you got them fighting a giant fly that can shoot larva out of its ass. You're crazy. And of course, I have been avoiding picking up bloatfly glands. I just took the meat, so I don't really have one. That is interesting. But this is also an interesting place because this has all the workbenches you would want right here in Diamond City. So the armor workbench, cooking station, uh, the chemical lab. Wait. Isn't that a chemical lab? Yeah, there we go, the chemistry station and the weapons workbench. So all the things you would need. And if you finish up that quest, you can use all her fancy materials to upgrade our stuff as well. So if I can find a blood fly gland, that would be really, really nice. So I can work here as well. Hey, I think those Bobrov brothers are looking for you. So there we go, a guard comes out and we need to talk to the Bobrov brothers now again. So those are the guys that managed to dug out in. So let's go talk to them. So there we go, let's go back in and the two brothers are standing right oh, next to each here other. Here we go. Quiet, if you. All right, you. Tell me, Diamond City Radio is terrible, yes? It makes you want to cut your own ears off. Well, um, Han noticed, really. I don't think I noticed. You listen to it. It grates on ears like sandpaper. This DJ Travis, he is disaster. Something must be done, and soon. We will have customers suiciding before long. Vadim. Vadim likes to exaggerate. Don't listen to my brother. Someone needs to get rid of him. We need a new DJ for the radio. I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared. So this is why I wanted to talk to Travis first, so we know what kind of the problem is. Um... That's a horrible idea. That's a horrible idea. I tell you, it would be easier than you think. You just have to talk to... Uh, you just have to talk him into following you out of town. All right. That's enough. Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. Okay, so that was uh, having a laugh. Right. We're all just having a laugh. Hey, okay, good. I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. Yefim and I worry about him. Well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. Okay. So we need to change that. So Travis, we met him. He was really, really awkward in our conversation as well. Barely got a word out. But uh, let's turn it around. Well, that can always be turned around. Exactly. This is what I'm telling you, Fim. Go on, spoil sport. Go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you. Meet me in back room. We discuss plan. Vadim is a dick to his brother, though. So there we go. We started Confidence Man. Which is a really cool name for a quest, right? Confidence Man. So let's follow Vadim. What do you want, Vadim? I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother. Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. I'd be happy to help. Okay, so Travis needs to believe in himself, yes? Believe he is capable of more. You know what works well for this? <laughs> a bar fight. Ever been in one? Um, I think we can hold our own. I've never used my fists for anything. I can hold my own, if that's what you mean. Exactly what I mean. I want you to back up Travis in his first fight. I want to stage fight here in Dugout. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? 
It does. So uh, how is that going to work? How would something like that even work? It makes sense. I promise. I have contacts. People I can count on. Real tough looking. But they will take a die for money. They confront Travis here at Dugout. You step in and give him who she needs to stand up to them. Then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough. And Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple, right? Well, he says nothing too rough, but uh, this is survival, so we need to be careful. All right, I'm in. Ah, I know I could count on you. I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up and it will go well. Promise. So there we go. We got a time frame as well. So meet Travis in the dugout in after 6 p.m. We still have a little bit of time. I'm going to sleep most of that off right here in my room. And then uh, we'll get going. So we get a save file right before when it happens as well. So, so seven hours of sleep. We are packaged from a lack of food, but we are well rested. So we just need to get rid of the food problem. And I de-equipped my, uh, unequipped my weapon as well. So let's slowly walk into the inn and normally Travis should come in. Uh, we, we already, well, that room is probably now that we're 24 hours later, uh, is not, no longer ours. You know what, Yefim, I'll get back to you on that. And there we go, Travis enters the room. Oh, you're wrong. Not so tough once you're not on the air. <laughs> yeah! I'm just, I'm, I'm only here for a drink. Oh, what's you wrong? Not so tough once you're not on the air. So let's talk to Travis. Hey there, pal. Oh, it's you. Um, it looks like trouble. Well, this whole situation looks like trouble. I, I didn't start this. I don't... I have no idea what I did to deserve this. I just wish they'd go away. You know what? Let's do something. Let's take a stand. Come on, man. Take a stand. Don't chicken out here. I, I don't think I, I could uh, do that thing that you're describing. <laughs> With these men, it could, well, it, it, it could turn violent. I do love Travis's voice acting. He's just so different than all the rest. So uh, I got your back, buddy. Don't worry. I've got your back. Well, if you think it would work. Well, it would. Um, okay. But I'm going to equip That's... more equipment first. Well, that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry. You say something. I said, I said, that's enough. Leave me alone. <laughs> Look at you. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Um, nah, I don't think so. I, I mean it. Leave me alone. Well, sounds like you were thinking about saying, or else. <laughs> were you, Travis? Were you going to say, or else? I'm wondering what comes after that. What you gonna do, little man? Uh, I'll beat you up! Big mistake, Travis. I'm gonna destroy you and your friend here. Get you are? Yeah. There we go, ow, ow. So as you can see, we're actually getting quite a bit of damage in there. But with VATS, I can actually execute a critical. And there we go, we take out Gouger with the critical. And then I can go out, so he's on his ass. Bullshit, man. And Bull has been hit by travel. Bullshit. This is bullshit, man. You still this gonna? This is not what I signed up for. This ain't over. You hear me? I I don't I don't uh. Okay. I usually don't. God, this is why. This is why. Okay, so Travis is a, a bit flustered. Uh, and Gouger is getting back up on his feet and also leaving. Because I kind of knocked him to the floor. There's a bit of... Sorry, sorry, Vadim. There's blood on your carpet. Didn't really mean for that to happen. But Travis, Travis. are you okay? Whoa. I, I can't believe it. We did it. I knew you had it in you. I can't... I can't believe it. You were right. Whoa. I've... I've got things to do now. Listen, really, I, I can't thank you enough. So there we go. We completed help Travis and now we can talk to Vadim. Vadim. Got a reason for bothering me. Don't run away. Vadim. 
I think that went well. Poof, 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 poof. <laughs> Ready for next part of foolproof plan? Of course we are. Bring it on. Bring it on. Good attitude. It's nice and easy. You have seen Scarlet, yes? She has worked here for some time. Now, I am just simple bartender, but I see things. I see how Travis looks at her. And I see that sometimes she looks at him. If someone who was not her employer suggests that she go spend time with Travis, it might do him some good. Indeed it would, so, uh, agree. I could have a chat with her. <laughs> yes, I know. This is why I'm telling you. Just do whatever it takes to get her to agree to see Travis, and this will all be worth it. And you and I never talked about this, all right? All right, Vadim, so thank you for that. Convince Scarlet to meet Travis. I think Scarlet is supposed to be here, but um, where the hell is she? So Scarlet actually lives on the other side of town, so she's uh, hanging around by the theater, um, where the mayor actually is as well. But hello, Scarlet. Yes. I'm on a break right now. Um, that, it's nothing... I mean, I just wanted to talk to you about Travis. Actually, I'd like to talk to you about Travis, if you have a moment. Travis? Really? Did he... Did he mention me? Uh, I heard about the fight. Travis was... Well, he was brave. Um, yes, he was. Yeah, absolutely. You should really pay him a visit. You think? I mean, I've everybody, definitely noticed him. Everybody, Maybe... I mean, no. Attention. No, I, I would couldn't like just go over there. The, that is on the mayor is really starting to annoy me. I'm just gonna... Yeah, thank you. I'm just gonna quickly get my dress on. Because, of course, the dress adds two pieces of charisma. So let's go back and we can persuade Scarlet. Look, Travis is a nice guy. I can tell that you like him. And I think he likes you. Just go talk to him. Okay, I will. There I'll we go. See him now. Thanks. With a little bit of charisma, we fixed that right up. Um, there was also another character we needed to talk to. I think it was Abbott. Is this Abbott? So there we go. That gives us the option of painting the town. So we can search the hardware store for paint. The hardware store isn't actually that far away. It's pretty close to uh, the apparel. So backstreet apparel. So uh, that's also going to be uh, a new source of revenue. Now, is... Sheng outside. No, he really doesn't doesn't like working, or I'm just checking him out in the wrong times. Let's go and talk to Vadim again. Yefim, I'm sorry. This is terrible. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. He was up to no good, and look what's happened now. You've got to help. I can't do it. You've got to help me. Okay, help you with what? What are you talking about? I am talking about Vadim. They took him! Th those men, th the ones that messed with Travis, they came back, said Vadim owed the money, that they had a deal. He, he wouldn't pay, and then they grabbed him and said that they would make him pay, and then they just dragged him out! You have to do something. Please tell me you can do something. We can, we can. Calm down, calm down, calm down. So I'll bring him back. I'll bring him back, Yefim. Count on it. Please, just bring him back. He's an idiot, but he's my brother. I'd go with you, but someone has to stay here. Talk to Travis. Maybe he knows where they took him. I mean, I already know where they took him. It's the place that we've passed by before, the Beantown Brewery. But sure, we'll talk to Travis. So this is slightly problematic. So Travis is going to want to go with us. But of course, I don't really want to have a companion. I'm not even sure if he counts as a companion. Um, oh, wow. You're tall. Hello, kids. You're not Shang. You're Pete. That's a wrong kid, but let's talk to Travis and the, at the radio station. Travis! Vadim is gone! Where the hell is Bull? That asshole from the dugout? He's taken Vadim. What? Come on, that... That's not funny. Um, well, th this is serious. I'm not joking around, Travis. This is serious. I really do need your help. Wait. Really? Oh... Oh, man. Wow, is this... This is because of what happened. Isn't it? It's... it's my fault. So now we need to be careful, uh, because of course we know it's not his fault, but we don't want to tell him everything, because otherwise all our work we've been doing to build his confidence is going to be gone. So, it's not your fault. No, Travis. This is between Vadim and those men. It's not your fault. But if I hadn't gotten into that fight with them, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Look, I don't, I don't really... 
I mean, I don't have a lot of friends. If Vadim is missing, or in trouble, or whatever, then I'm gonna help get him back. Um, no, it's too dangerous. It's probably gonna be dangerous. I expect things will get ugly. I'm not, I, I'm not stupid. I know that. I've heard enough to know they're probably holed up at the old Beantown Brewery. We've gotta go in there, show them we mean business, and and then we can bring Vadim back, and everything will be okay. Right? I'll, I'll get a gun, and I'll meet you there. We'll settle this. Yeah, indeed, we'll settle this. So, there we go, the Beantown Brewery. Hello, Scarlet, so this seems to have worked out fine. Um, I'm sorry I interrupted your sexy times. So what we're gonna do next is leave Diamond City, head back to Hangman's Alley, sleep there, and then head to Beantown Brewery to help out Travis and Vadim. So geared up and ready to go. We're uh, back at Hangman's Alley. I'm grabbing the power armor so we can uh, start firing away. I don't think I have enough, well, extra resources to make this gun any better. So let's head out towards the Beantown Brewery. It shouldn't be that far, that just slammed into my face. And this time I'm gonna actually close off Hangman's Alley just a little bit. So we have five fusion cores now because the four we stole from uh, the detective agency and that should all be fine. So hopefully I'll see you guys at the Beantown Brewery without too much trouble. So I did my research on most of the locations that I'm pretty sure that the Beantown Brewery has a mattress, um, otherwise we could sleep at Oberland Station over there, but the brewery itself should also have a mattress. So once we clear that, a few of the raiders inside, we should be able to sleep. And uh, of course save, because if we die, we die. But of course we have the power armor, so we should be fine for now. We're going to be okay, right? Um, uh, d d definitely? Definitely. We'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Good. I mean, I can do this. Totally. No, you need we, to stay uh, outside. Any last minute advice? I've never done anything like this. Well, um... You're not having second thoughts, are you? Of course I am. But... But Vadim needs us. Come on. Let's go. Please stay behind me, Travis. So, sneak. Please sneak. Because this is going to be a problem, isn't it? Let's go into the Beantown Brewery. So, Beantown Brewery is a bitch because of multiple reasons. I'm going to stay detected because of Travis. And this first area immediately has... Oh, crap. And that's also reacts to Travis. Immediately has one or two raiders on the right here, if I'm not mistaken. So, I think... That's one of those jangled moon monkeys, so he's gonna... Oh, wow. Okay. Was that a roach? But I'm pretty sure there's at least one of them sleeping here, so there we go. Um, is that his arm? Okay, fine. His arm, I suppose. Let's just kill him. There we go. Idiot Savant triggered on that one. Holy crap, that was 212 experience in one go. So now the raiders are gonna come down, so I need to be careful because... Yeah, yeah, righteous authority, so they're gonna come down over here. If that door opens... That sounded like a door opening. Uh, but it's not that door. Where is that roach? Oh, the rat roach is up there. Okay, never mind. We really need to worry about that. This place is a brewery, so it's filled with... Okay. 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 So it's filled with uh, bottles as well, so we can make a hell of a lot of purified water after this, which is why I want to take this quest as well. Who's out there? You sure you saw something? Let's kill that thing. And now we need to be careful, because I think they're going to come for us. Yeah, the door is definitely open. Um, hello? I think I'm still holding grenades as well. Like Travis, shut the fuck up. Okay, Travis wasn't saying anything, I'm just on edge. Because of course Raiders means Molotov cocktails. And Molotov cocktails means, yeah, everything annoying. So Tower Tom, let's kill him from over here with a critical. I think I can do that, so if I do just this, accept and critical. Oh god, there's one on the right. Oh, he's not dead yet. Okay. 
That's killed the uh, Psycho in the face. That's in the face. And the second one as well. And we got level 15. Now. Uh, that Tom guy is definitely going to come in this direction. Oh, hi. And there we go. Just need to be careful. Ow. Holy shit. I think he has a sniper rifle of some sort. A hunting. Ooh, gold. So there's Bull and everybody else. So Gouger. Gouger can go. And then Bull. I think he can go with normal shots. There we go. Now we need to be careful because more. Okay, that guy is shooting at me from over there. But that were Tom. He has healed himself. But I think another critical in his face should end his life. There we go. Okay. There's one more over there. There we go. Some manual aiming. And I need to heal. So the ribeye steak in my mouth. And I can heal up while we're going around. That's... Ooh, that's interesting. 308 rounds. Always that. Travis, for fuck... I'm gonna shoot your ass. Stop pushing me. So they we're still in danger. So there's definitely at least one more alive. I think it might actually be... A turret somewhere. Because this place is actually pretty big. There's multiple levels to it. Um... And the fact that we're still in danger, I'm guessing it might be because of the rat roaches. Because we were in danger before all of this started, so I think we're pretty okay right now. If I can find... Oh, crap. Can I get a corpse here? Yeah. Because he has a heavy hunting... Please don't push me! Please don't... I am gonna murder you, Travis. For fuck's sake. Okay, let's talk to Vadim. He should be, yeah, right here. Hello, Vadim. Uh, I'm not going to pickpocket you. I'm just going to talk. Thank you. I didn't know if anyone would come. I thought perhaps this is the end. Uh, thank you. Thank you. You are true friend. Um, let, let's get, uh, let's get moving. We can talk about it later. Let's get moving. Yes. Yes. I would very much like to go home. Luis, can you untie him? <laughs> These idiots had caps and cams just lying around. <laughs> they, they did not notice when I filled my pockets. You deserve what I took. Okay, I thanks. Travis, I am surprised to see you here. <laughs> hey, Dean. I'm glad you're safe. How did you get roped into this? I, I wasn't forced or anything. I wanted to help. <laughs> you are full of surprises, my friend. And the terminal over here just indicates that these are actually the same group, are part of the same group of raiders as the guys from Corvega and the guys that originally attacked the uh, Minutemen in Concord, which is really, really interesting. So let's get the Gwyneth Brew recipe. I don't know if that's going to be in anything interesting. Okay, there's nothing interesting. I thought it might have been an, uh, an audio diary. So now Travis and Vadim are going to leave, which I think they should be fine with. And I'm going to use this moment to just fill my inventory with... Ooh, don't forget picket fences. You're now able to build picket fencing at workshops. Very important. And then we grab all the bottles we can find. So there we go, the upper level. I knew there was something else here. Uh, so let's just take the bottles. The upper level has a few more radius. Shit's got ambush all over it. There we go. Hi. <laughs> and then this guy can actually go to... Oh, gold. Yeah, he's not gonna... He's gonna keep firing that. There we go. Holy crap, that was half my health. And did he damage one of my pieces? No, he didn't. That guy had a combat rifle. Okay, it wasn't a shotgun. Otherwise, I probably would have been dead. That's a nice piece of uh, armor, though. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm going to have to heal. I'm going to actually grab the grilled rat stack. That actually gives me extra carry capacity. And I'm going to need it for what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to take everything I can grab here. Um... Reason for that is I want to just grab some more materials. There's plenty of points in the game that you can start gathering materials. But uh, basically, ooh, a red dress. I mean, that's a waste of carry capacity, but I'm going to take it anyway. 
And this door is openable as well. Yes. Let's open that up. And that goes into the room with the rat roach, I think. So if I go over here, we can just kill that rat roach with fats. And that works towards our next uh, critical as well. So as long as we can do that, we should be fine. And there's two teddy bears having a really, really good time here as well. That is, I, I mean, Bethesda, this was a bit much, wasn't it? Two, yeah, okay, boning teddy bears. So, after the clearing the entire area of bottles, uh, well, both empty and full, we get... Two Gwynedd Brews, one Gwynedd Pale, three Gwynedd Pilsners, four Gwynedd Stouts. Add about, well, 80 empty bottles. So, 80 empty bottles means we're gonna get 80 purified water when we get back. And we still have a few bits of capacity to spare, so let's head out. And before we actually finish this quest, because I think we just need to go back to Diamond City and talk to them again, I want to be actually dumber. So I'm going to drink one of those beers in a minute. Although you know what, I might as well, right? So Gwyneth Brew, there we go. Let's drink that up. We're a bit dumb, we're a bit drunk as well. And now we can go back to Diamond City. And because we're level 15, now we also get the uh, first quest of the... Um, Fallout Force first DLC, Automatron. So we can start doing that as well, but it's quite hard. So I'm gonna just wait with that and just head back to uh, the Dugout Inn. So we also had, I'm back at Hangman's Alley. We also had another perk point we can use and I think that can go, no, Lone Wanderer 2 isn't available yet. So we can put that into better criticals too. So your criticals now do twice as much damage and it can go to two and a half times as much, as much damage. So let's just go with that. There we go. So back in Diamond City, I just popped another beer. So that should Let's get, get our uh, intelligence as low as possible. I think I should also probably grab the dress again yeah. and equip that. The red dress actually does the same thing, but is uh, lighter than the sequine dress. So let's just check that out. I just want to see, ooh, look at that. Yeah, definitely going for the red dress next. And we actually need to go to the radio station instead of the dugout in. So it's kind of mistaken there. But if we go in here, we can wrap up our very first quest in Diamond City. Man. And there we have Travis. What a day, huh? Indeed. Hey, listen. I wanted to say thanks. This has been, well, it's been crazy. But I've learned a lot, I think. I think you can also hear it, because he talks a lot different than when we first met him. You came through it all pretty well, Travis. That's good to hear. Thanks. After all this, I think about the things that had me worried so much, and it just seems silly, you know? Like, was I really that worried about just being on the radio? That's nothing compared to being beaten up, shot at. I can do so much more. And I need to. Anyway, thanks again. I owe you. There we go. And that basically wraps up Confidence Man. I didn't get an idiot savant prompt on the end of the quest again. That's really starting to become an issue. I think I can even... No. Oh, I thought I could have used his bed after that. But apparently Travis doesn't really like me that much yet. And I even put on my best dress for him. So this was a bit of a talkative episode. We had a lot of people we needed to talk to, a lot of quests we started, and only one that we really ended. But uh, next time we're going to do Unlikely Valentine. So that's going to be the main quest. And there's going to be a lot of combat in, uh, included into that episode. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And next time we're going to head towards uh, Skinny Malone and try to rescue Detective Valentine, so Nick Valentine. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And when you do, don't forget to like it right here underneath this video on YouTube itself. But uh, otherwise, thank you guys enormously for watching and see you guys in the next episode of Fallout 4 Survival. Goodbye.